Präsident äh, Letzte wieder ein. Wir kommen zum dritten und letzten Vortrag des Abends. Vorher noch kurze Hinweise. Ein Hinweis oder eine Danksagung noch. Ich habe gerade äh, vorhin noch das Feedback bekommen von einem, der sich so gefreut hat, dass die Vorträge der Welt halt auch im Internet zu sehen sind und damit auch so nochmal anschaubar sind, beziehungsweise für die Leute, die den Vortrag verpasst haben, die auch sehen können. Das macht für uns freundlicherweise Wolf Dieter Roth, der hier vorne auch mit der Videokamera heute wieder sitzt. Vielen Dank, Wolf Dieter, dass du wieder da bist und die Vorträge werden auch in den nächsten Tagen wieder im Netz sein auf YouTube, verlinkt auf unserer Facebook-Seite. Ja, großen Applaus, danke. Wie alle Referenten auch hier ehrenamtlich und äh, ja, danke dafür. Was äh, ich noch sagen wollte, genau, ein, eine Sache eher in eigener Sache. Ich bin äh, auch mit bei einer Theateraufführung am Wochenende, äh, wobei ich in der Technik bin, also nicht vorne, aber es geht um die Wandlung von Fleisch, äh, sehr pragmatisch, sehr sichtbar. Mehr kann ich nicht sagen, nur dass äh, hier entsprechende Karten auch liegen. Wer sich dafür interessiert, wird in der Hofferthalle sein von Prott. Das ist äh, eine Theatergruppe von Alexis Sager, das ist schon lange aktiv auch hier ist, und wirklich immer wieder mit recht kontroversen äh, Aktionen auch aufgefallen ist. Wer sich dafür interessiert, wie gesagt, Flyer hier. Ansonsten nochmal Erinnerung daran, wir sind den Referenten für die Möglichkeit, meldet euch. Bis jetzt hat sich nur eine, einer gemeldet, der mal Interesse hätte. Also wir brauchen mehr Leute, sagt es weiter. Und äh, außerdem nicht vergessen die Midnight am Dienstag. Und äh, ja, ich habe äh, wechsel mal ins Englische. Ein Dr. Switcher English Name, Chris Duncan, who's going to do the next talk, uh, is from the UK. He's been here in Munich for the last year. Actually, the third speaker tonight, all speakers are from Max, different Max Planck Institutes. Uh, he's from actually a, a physicist and uh, is working on string theory. Uh, we're just talking about it. And Really good to have a, t a speaker talking about uh, string theory in 15 minutes. Uh, that would be a great talk. Um, let's see if we can do that sometime. But uh, he'll do something else today. He'll talk about uh, different optical uh, phenomena. And uh, yeah, I'll just give the microphone to John. Great, thank you very much, Patrick, um, for the opportunity to, to talk about this. Um, and I'm completely overwhelmed by the number of people. I'm, I'm really hugely impressed by the, the density of nerds in, in the universe. <laughs> um, so this is actually a hobby for me. This is something that I've been uh, looking at for about five years now, and this first photo. So this is really going to be lots of photos. So hopefully with the beer and the time, uh, it's just going to be a relaxing talk. Um, so the, this first, first photo is one that I took about five years ago. Um, and I've read about these phenomena before, um, and this really got me interested. And I will, will tell you about how these occur um, and what to look out for. And really, this is to try and um, promote this and show that there are incredible things out there to see if you know to look. So, some motivations for giving this talk. So, I'm a scientist, I've been working um, in uh, theoretical physics now for the last 10 years or so. Um, and this subject is really a, a reconfirmation of why I'm interested in science. Um, because from very, very basic principles, we can understand really fantastic phenomena that we can see around us. So I've got this quote from, uh, from Dirac at the bottom here. He said, I, can, I consider that I understand an equation when I can predict the properties of its solutions without actually solving it. Now, what I work in from day to day, that's never going to happen. I look at the equations and I haven't got a clue. So I put it on the computer and I work it out. Um, but with what I'm going to talk about here, um, these are really simple principles, so very, very simple principles of light and optics um, and air and water and various things. And from simple principles, you can understand incredible things. So you can go out there and, and see these, these incredible things. So I, I like to talk about it because I like the, the reaction that I get from other people when I see these um, and I tell them about it. So it's, it depends. So I find it in different countries. When I see these phenomena in the sky and I tell people about them, I get very different reactions. But here in Germany, I get very, very good reactions when I, when I stop people and point at strange things in the sky. Um, so I also want to try and clear my name um, for when people see me in the, in the street and I'm staring up at the sun looking like an idiot. Um, so hopefully after this, we'll understand why I'm doing it. <clears throat> um, so just some very simple caveats. Um, 
th this is just a hobby for me. Um, so please ask questions, uh, of course, at, at the end, um, but, and I'll be able to point you in the direction if I, if I don't know the answers. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to give you some, some good explanations. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the interaction of ice with light, which gives solar halos, so this first photo that you saw. Um, and very often this can be seen when there are cirrus clouds in the sky, which are these sort of wispy clouds in the background here. Um, and these have a very high density of ice crystals. And we know that uh, all snowflakes have different forms, but actually all ice crystals have the same structure, the same symmetry. They have a hexagonal symmetry. And the way light passes through them um, it is very, uh, it, it passes through in a very, very strict way. So I have here the diagram, you can see uh, there, so light passes through, and as it passes through the ice crystal, it splits into different colours. So just by having ice crystals in the sky, we can, we can understand how we get these amazing patterns. I'll, I'll show you this in a moment. So we can think about the light coming from the sun. We have a single crystal of ice up in the sky. And as the light from the sun passes through, it splits, it refracts into the different colours. Okay? But of course, this is just one crystal in one place in the sky. But at that place in the sky, the crystals will take all different orientations. Okay? So if we think about all the different orientations, as the light passes through, we'll create a, a beam of refracted light, this circle of refracted light. Now, depending on where you're standing, so this person down the bottom here is going to see some refracted light from this crystal, but the person up here isn't, it does, it's not going to reach them. So each person is going to see light from different parts of the sky. Okay. And we can work out what those parts are. And in fact, each person will see a ring in the sky from the light passing through these crystals. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Okay. So this is the, the so-called 22 degree solar halo. And I put the, the lamppost there so I didn't blind myself. Um, and so the, the, the photo came out. Um, but here you see, this is simply the refraction of light passing through the ice crystals in the sky. Okay. And it creates this really, really fantastic effect. And all you need to see this, well, if you have, uh, have a pair of sunglasses, then it adds more contrast, um, but it's really, really easy to see. Okay? Um, and I saw this for the first time maybe five years ago, and since this I've probably seen this once a month or so. Okay? So it looks like a very rare thing, but actually, if you know to look, it's, it's really everywhere. <clears throat> so again, it, it just comes from the light passing through crystals of different orientations, um, refracting, splitting into the different colors, and reaching your eyes. So some people, when I tell them about this, they, they say, ah, I've, I've seen this around the moon, this sort of um, misty, misty colors around the moon. And this is something a little bit different. This is called a, a corona. So this is a diffraction effect from the droplets of water in the mist. So you often see this sort of effect around the moon or even around the sun on a, on a very foggy day. And this is a little bit different. So this is a, a, a lunar halo, um, so this was taken on a, on a beach in Mozambique, um, and actually people seem to see this uh, even more often, so it's, it's not so clear, but when you're actually there, you've got this fantastic colour of ring around the moon. So uh, another effect comes from, also from crystals, but this time from plate crystals, which are lying horizontally. Okay? So the first one was from column crystals, which take all different orientations in the sky. But the plate crystals like to lie flat, and because they lie flat, the light will only pass through them and reach you when they're to either side of the sun. Okay? So these so-called sun dogs come from the plate crystals which are lying horizontally all around the sky, but the only ones that you see the light coming from are the ones to the side of the sun. So this was a, a photo I took in, in Portugal a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Um, I blocked the, the sun out with my hand, but you see to the right this spot of light. So this is coming from the plate crystals lying horizontally. Okay. Uh, down the bottom, there's the, the same thing again with the, the two sun dogs, um, and they create these amazing coloured points of light on the side of the, the, side of the, the sun. And I see this probably uh, once a week or so. So this is something, if you know to look into there, it can be really beautiful. To, to the right is an image um, in a sort of wispy cirrus cloud, you get these incredible colours. So just, just look up and you're likely to see these sorts of things. This isn't by me, but this is a photo of moon dogs. Um, taken, I think, in, uh, in Canada. Um, so these moon dogs you see to the side of the moon, but also you've got this strange line going down, the line going down from the moon. And in fact, this is because you also have the plate crystals, and they're lying, and they, they act like mirrors. Okay? So you've got them lying all over the place, but they act like mirrors. So the light from the moon bounces off them, uh, and comes to you, and you see this column uh, below and sometimes above the moon as well. 
So depending on the sorts of crystals and the densities and the, the conditions in the sky, you can get completely different displays. So what I've shown you so far is very, very simple refractions through the crystals, but in fact you can get much, much more than that. So this one again from Porto, um, you see here the, the top the top left, there's sort of the 22 degree halo, but there's another halo at the top as well, the so-called the so tangent arc. So the, the tangent arc, um, this one at the top, I'll explain in a moment, um, but there's a very special point here. So you see again uh, the sun dog, so this point to the right of the of the sun, but in fact it turns out, so I, I sent this photo off to a, a real expert in this and he was hugely excited because if you, if you zoom in on this point then you see these strange patterns of light which come from very, very particular orientations of the ice in the sky. Okay. Um, these so-called low examples so that haven't been, haven't been photographed more than a couple of times before. So, you know, this is, although this is something that you can see all the time, there are still rarities um, if you know what to look for. So not only do you have the circle around the sun, but you can get these incredible circles that go all the way around the sky. The so-called uh, perihelic circle, which can start at the sun and go all the way around to the anti-solar point on the other side of the sky. And these come again from particular uh, interactions of the light with the crystals, um, and because of the way it passes through, these, this line around the sky is perfectly white. So there's a beautiful photo here from, from Israel. Um, what you see again, so you've got the sun and the 22 degree halo, and then this line going all the way around the sky. The top comes from another orientation, this tangent arc, and the lower tangent arc there you see, um, again from a particular orientation of crystals. Okay, so, so those were some kind of nice pictures that you can, you can see all around the place. Um, but if you want to see some incredible photos, so this guy, Marco Rikkanen, who's really the world halo expert, um, spends a lot of time in the, in the South Pole, um, and on this day back in 1999, there was a very spectacular display. So I recommend going online and having a look at this. Uh, Google him and you'll, you'll find these photos. Um, so this was a day where there were 24 distinct types of halo. Um, and can you imagine going outside and seeing this? Okay. So this would, would be seen completely with the naked eye, the whole sky is lit up with these incredible bows and arcs. So this, this one at the top, this sort of smile at the top, the so-called circumzenithal arc, is really bright, really colourful, so it's spectacular to, to see. And then looking straight up, you see this, so the whole sky is really covered with these incredible bands. And each one is, is created by a particular type of interaction with the crystals, the light, um, the, the light passing through and refracting in particular ways, and it creates this really, really beautiful pattern in the sky. <clears throat> so you don't have to go to the South Pole to see you know, these fantastic images. So this was one that I took in, well, in Paris, obviously. Um, uh, but what, what kind of, this was an amazing thing to see, it was fantastic for me, but what really saddened me was that I was standing there looking up at the Eiffel Tower and this incredible display around it, and nobody else saw. I still don't understand how you can have some, something so incredible and nobody else sees it. So the reason I'm here is really to tell people to look for this. Because when you need to look, you know, you see it and it's, it's really, it's quite beautiful. So this I took in the English Garden, so on the left here you have um, the, the sun shining through the trees, and you can just see there to the right the, the sun dog. Okay, so from the horizontal crystal line there you get the sun dog. But this was special because you got a reflection of the sun and the reflection of the sun dog. So this is four images of the sun coming from different refractions and refra reflections uh, in the water. And then on the right is just a zoom in of the reflection of the sun dog on the lake uh, with the, the ripples. This I took about a week ago here in, in Munich. Um, uh, and this was a, a nice experience because I, I stop people all over the world. So I see these, I look at them, and I stop people in the street and tell them, hey, look, you know, look at this amazing thing. Um, and I get different reactions, but here in Germany I was, I was really pleased that people seemed very enthusiastic about it. Um, so I, I, I stopped a lot of people to, to show them this. So this was a, actually a very rare display. So you have the, the 22 degree circle around the sun, you have the sun dogs to the side, you have this upper tangent arc above, and then you have this much, much bigger arc which I've never seen before, the so-called 46 degree halo, which comes from a very, very special type of crystal, which has particular orientations. <clears throat> so this sort of display is often seen actually in, in Northern Europe, I've never seen this myself. Um, this again comes from these plate crystals, but acting like mirrors. So they're all lying horizontally in the sky, and the light from the street lamps 
hits the, the, the crystals. So really what you're seeing here is the reflection of the street lamps in the street of the mirrors in the sky. Okay. Um, so this is a, a simple uh, video that I got from, from YouTube. I, mean, I got this, uh, this guy's permission yesterday to share this. Um, but this is a, a pretty beautiful video of what you can actually see. So you know, this is all, all seen with the naked eye. Okay, so you see this, this the halo around the sun, and then there's actually a tangent arc which goes all the way around the halo, and then you've got this pair helix circle which goes all around the sky. So the whole sky is really lit up with these incredible lines. <clears throat> so I want to go quickly from uh, from ice to water, um, and I've got this little uh, quote by Descartes here. Um, where he, he talks about the rainbow as a grossly distorted image of the sun in the form of a giant arc in the sky space of directions. And I think this is a really beautiful way of thinking about a, a rainbow. Okay, so a rainbow is just an image of the sun which itself is hugely distorted. And here this is just a photo of a sunset being reflected through droplets on a, on a window. So I just want to point out some things that uh, maybe you haven't seen before. But if you see a rainbow just, just around sunset, then you'll find that the rainbow is only red. Okay, so the, the sun shining through the atmosphere, um, a lot of, all of the blue light is, uh, is um, uh, reflected off, is absorbed and, and, and uh, sent off in other directions, so you just get the red light coming through, and what you end up is a so-called red bow. So this red bow in the top left. Fog bows come from very, very little droplets, so small droplets where you get diffraction effects. Okay, so rather than the normal just reflection and refraction effects which you get in a rainbow, you get these diffraction effects and you can get these wonderful bows on a foggy day if you have the sun in just the right place. Um, and on the left here is a moon bow. So if you're lucky enough to see a moon bow, it's really, really something quite spectacular. If you see rainbows and you're near water, go to the, the place with the water and have a look, and you might see some really, really incredible patterns. So these come from not just the light shining from the sun onto the droplets of water and coming back, but the light reflects off the lake, up into the, into the sky, off the droplets and back in. So you get these amazing effects with three or four or five different bows from different, uh, different reflection patterns. Another effect to look out for is cloud iridescence. So this is a beautiful sort of pearlescent uh, colour in the sky, and this comes from the, the corona, which again is from the little droplets of water um, shining up, uh, diffracting through the, the droplets, um, and you get these incredible pearly colours uh, around the sun. So this is, this is most easy to see if there's a building, or there's a, a dark cloud in the way, so I saw this in Paris, and you get these wonderful um, sort of effervescent colours in the, in the cloud. As you're taking off in a plane and you're going through the clouds, look down. If you're on, the, on the, the side of the plane, away from the sun, look down at your shadow, and very often you'll see a, a, a coronal pattern, so-called glory, around the shadow of the plane. Okay? So there's this incredible sort of, it looks like a rainbow, a full rainbow going around. Um, and this comes from light, which is, which is going down onto the droplets and reflecting exactly back in the same direction, splitting the colors and coming back in the same direction. Um, and so what you have here is the sun behind you, you see the shadow of yourself or the plane, and you have this incredible ring around the, around the image. So you'll see this almost every time you go up through the clouds if you're in the right place in the plane. Um, and again, you know, no, nobody knows to look for this sort of thing, so next, next time you're in a plane, look out and, and you'll probably see it. So next, so we, we've, we've done uh, uh, ice, we've done water, but you can look out for these, uh, uh, these shadows, these rays and shadows. So you often see these, but in fact these are an optical illusion. So you see these rays, these shadows coming out through the clouds with the sun behind the cloud. And in fact this is a great optical illusion because it looks like they're spreading out in all directions, but in fact they're perfectly parallel. So this is just a perspective effect, just in the same way that if you have train lines coming towards you, it looks like they're getting wider and wider. In fact, these rays coming from the, from the clouds are perfectly parallel. And what this means is that as they're parallel and they pass over you, if you look behind you, you can see them coming back together on the other side. So this I took in, uh, in South Africa a couple of years ago, and you can see the shadow of me on the beach there. And you see the lines there going down, and you might think that these are just the, the shadows from the from the sun coming up, but in fact these are the lines that have gone all the way around the sky and then back on the other side. Okay? So look out for these sort of effects, it's, it's just beautiful to see the sky lit up with these, with these lines. Cloud shadows you'll see quite often if you look up as well. Um, so this is a, a cloud 
with fog below. Okay? And the sun is above the cloud, and you see the, the shadow of the cloud cast on the fog below. <laughs> so th this is another optical illusion, because it looks like these, these shadows are above the cloud. But in fact, they're not. They're actually on the layers of cloud, the, the layers of cloud. So yeah, an another beautiful, beautiful effect to, to look out for. So I, I don't know, some people, people have heard of the, the green flash. And um, so the green flash is an effect whereby just at the, the last minute as, as the sun is setting, there's a flash of green. Okay? So we know that the sunset is normally red, but just as it's disappearing, there can be a flash of green. And this comes from, from two different effects. Okay, the first effect is the fact that different colours of light are refracted differently through the sun, through the, through the atmosphere as the, uh, as the sun or the moon is setting. Okay? So the green light and the red light are refracted differently, and this means that you get a, a, a separation in the two images. So here it's, it's quite difficult to see on this, but just at the top of the moon there, there's a, there's a very, very thin green rim, and at the bottom there's a red rim. Okay? So the image of the moon or the sun is slightly distorted, and you get these two, two images, the, the images of the different colours. So this is the first thing that you need to do. You need the, the green part of the sun or the moon to be at the top. And the second thing that you need is a so-called temperature inversion. So normally you have that uh, from the surface of the Earth or the sea, the temperature as you go up into the atmosphere gets colder and colder. Okay? But in fact, sometimes if you have the perfect conditions, you'll find that uh, as, the, as you go up in the atmosphere, the temperature goes up and then down and then up and then down again. So you can get different layers of different densities of air. And these, dense, di these different layers of different densities of air act as a magnifying glass. Okay? So as the, as the sun or the moon passes through, it magnifies different parts of the, of the sun. And, and in fact, you can just see at the top of this image, there's a little part of the sun which is separated off. Okay? Basically, this is a magnification of the very rim of the sun, and you see there's a, there's a little bit of green around that. But in fact, this is a much better set of images. So as the sun sets and magnifies through these different parts of the of the sky with the different densities, parts of the sun appear to split off, and as they split off, you see the green part of them, and even the blue part, which is extremely rare, um, shine out, and you see this flash of green or blue. Okay, so I, I really just want to point out some of these effects, um, these really beautiful effects. If you know to look for them, they're all around. So all the time, um, every week, you will see these sorts of effects. And um, so. Uh, this was just a simple image uh, that I, I took in Argentina last year. Um, but look out, okay? So look out, keep looking at the sky, take a pair of sunglasses with you, look at the, what's happening with the light in the sky, um, and hopefully you'll see some of these fantastic images. So thank you very much for this. So all, all of these are pure ice crystals, okay? Um, what we don't actually know, so we don't have a very good theory of when, what conditions you get different formations of the ice crystals, okay? So it seems that in some conditions where there's a particular humidity or a temperature or a wind speed in that part of the atmosphere, then you get certain types of crystal, and at other times you get other types of crystal. And this is still a little bit of a mystery exactly when you get the, the different types. Um, we, we know so we can do simulations, so you can basically um, create a virtual environment and fill that environment with different crystals and then work out what a, what a viewer will see, so we can do that. So we can work out exactly what are the crystals that make up a, up a particular display, but exactly what, why the crystals form in that way is still a little bit of a mystery. Share the microphone with you. Uh, if you have questions, you can also ask them in German. I'll translate uh, if you want to. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's just a student comment. 
uh, I hope you won't see the success of, of, your, of your lecture in, in the newspapers uh, in the statistics of uh, increasing um, pedestrian accidents. <laughs> is, there, is there a community of people who really uh, go out for, for this, uh, looking for the phenomenon? Or is, is there, a, a, are there uh, special times when you know that the different phenomena will appear more often? So it, it seems that most of the, the people that really are the experts in this come from, uh, from Northern Europe. Um, so these guys from, from Finland um, spend a lot of time searching specifically for, for these and actually making them as, themselves. So what you can do, you can go out if there's a really cold day and the, um, the, the sky is full of these so-called diamond dust, the very, very fine uh, uh, crystals of, of ice. You can shine the light through them at night and actually create these patterns yourself. So some people seem to do that um, and they look for, for new, new patterns. Um, so there, there's this uh, the website that I I uh, put on at the beginning um, called uh, At Optics. I'll, I'll go back to that. So At Optics is really the, the bible for, for all of this. It's where I got all of these images. So uh, this guy Les Cowley um, in, the, in the UK is, is really a world expert on this. So all of these things and many many more can be seen at At Optics. Um, so there, there is a community of people who, who, who share these. There's also scientific papers which are which are written about these. So I, I found actually the, the photo I showed with the, the very rare arts, the so-called Lowen's arts, I found that they were in a paper, a scientific paper a, a year or so later. Um, so just go out there, take photos, and you can actually be doing true scientific research. I mean, this phenomenon kind of reflects a certain weather conditions, so is it known that ancient uh, civilizations use these uh, phenomena actually to judge what kind of weather there is a That's a good question. I, I don't know about the history of it, but certainly I found that very often when you see the, the cirrus clouds and you see particularly the 22 degree halo, it normally means that the weather is going to change and it's going to be raining. Um, so I've normally found that a day or two after that, yeah, it's a sort of transition time from a, a good period to a, to a rainy period. But that, that's a good question. I don't know what are the predictive powers and uh, more ancient civilizations thought about this, but it could, could well be. I just wonder why the angle has to be 22, 46, and only these numbers. So you can look at the, um, the hexagonal crystal. Okay. So this one at the bottom here. Um, and you can look at light passing through the face. So because it's a hexagon, there are only certain angles that it can pass through. Okay. And you can look at the angles as you, as you rotate the crystal, and you'll see that it goes from about 20 to 26 degrees. But the 22 degree deflection is the one where most of the light goes through. So then this particular one comes from uh, just these, uh, these hexagonal crystals. The 46 degree halo, I think actually comes from a pyramidal uh, crystal. So this is why it's somewhat more rare, because most crystals uh, take this hexagonal form. Um, so it simply comes from looking at the possible uh, refractions and reflections through the crystal. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a fairly easy calculation to, to work out what are the, what's the deflection through a particular crystal. Any more questions? If not, then I say uh, thank you again, Tom. Ja, vielen Dank, dass ihr da wart. Denkt bitte dran, wir brauchen weitere.